Hi, I'm Jerry Ayers with The Calling 2.0 and. And this is The Gathering Radio Show. My name is Stephanie. And I'm Heidi. And we are here tonight for a special edition show. Jerry, do you want to tell everybody what this show is all about and introduce introduce our guest? Well, a person that we all know together, um, he's he's really good about what he does and stuff with Search for Spirits, and it's Russ uh, Victorian with, again, Search for Spirits. He had some things happen to him um, on his latest expedition to find Bigfoot or anything that's out in the wilderness. Russ, you're with us. Yes, absolutely. How are you doing tonight? Doing quite well, ladies. Yeah. Hey, Russ. Hey, Hello. Russ. Good to have I you here. I understand you were up at Bigfoot Days and then ventured out into the woods. Yeah, absolutely. We did. Um, a story is kind of uh, goes all the way back to the point where my lead investigator called and said he wasn't feeling well. He couldn't go along. And uh, but despite that, at the last minute, I decided, you know, I'm just going to go up there by myself anyway. Mm -hmm. So I took the travel van. We have a little travel van and uh, rolled up there on my own, got up there in the midst of a huge thunderstorm. But uh, yeah, and it was a very exciting weekend. Do you feel that you... um do you usually do stuff by yourself? I mean, don't you think that's a little unsafe? I started this team by myself many, many years ago. And so for the first several years, I did everything on my own. And, uh, you know, it wasn't until probably four four years later, maybe, that uh, Mark joined me and the team kind of grew a little bit larger. But uh, in the early years, it was me or just an occasional friend that would go along. So. No, it doesn't really bother me that much. I mean, there was moments I certainly wish somebody would have been with me that night. But yeah, gotcha. Now, what do you say out there to uh, people just starting their team? If you're just starting a team, I, I think it's very important to ensure you're grounded. Um, you have some sort of protections that you have set up for yourself, and you do a lot of research before you get out there and start digging around. Because, and then you know, have somebody come with you, right? Well, yes, I know some <laughs> do, some don't. So, you know, it's kind of a personal preference for some. Right. Okay. I'm Sorry. curious, Russ. Do you do you actually prefer then to investigate by yourself? I actually I like to see if I can obtain evidence in both types of situations. Um, utilizing multiple situations to validate the type of um, evidence you're receiving. So, yes, sometimes I like to be alone, but then later catch up with the group, you know, and I think there's a lot of people that kind of do it that way. I think you're probably right about that. So walk us through what happened when you were up there staying all by yourself in the woods. Right. Well, we, we, me, I say we, I'm talking about me and my frog. Yeah. Um, I was driving down the road, me and the van, we, uh, and I saw one vehicle. I was heading out into the Reamer State Forest and, and just, I did a little bit of research. I didn't have a real clear idea where I was going. It got a little darker earlier than I thought. And so I'm driving along on these old logging roads and ended up, I found a, a little clearing that had some opening around me because I wanted to kind of be in a bit of an open area where I could kind of see around and whatnot, check for tracks. Found a really good spot, actually. Passed only one car on the way out there. And so I just parked my van kind of in the middle of that thing. And I wasn't there long. There was an old white Subaru that came chugging by with the loud muffler and whatnot. And he was going real slow. And I just assumed it was probably another Sasquatch uh, Bigfoot research type person. Don't know if it was or wasn't. But lo and behold, I heard the big old loud muffler and it stopped only about a quarter mile at most down the road, like the next pullover. And then I was a little concerned with what he's doing. He shut the engine off 
And uh, he didn't play a big role, but the bottom line is it was the only vehicle that passed that entire night, not another vehicle. So it gives you an idea about how far out I was. Um, mm -hmm. In the end, I, I did my, I was able to get a little bit of internet and I actually found on my, one of my apps that I was sitting in the Chippewa National Forest that had kind of gone outside of the borders of the Reamer State Forest and ended up in the Chippewa, which is fine because they have overnight camping as well, which was something I was looking for. And so I'm sitting out there, I'm hanging out and I got all my windows open because I'm mainly focusing on um, Sasquatch vocalizations. That's really what I was anticipating. I'm hoping to pick up something um, and it's getting late, it's dark already. I had a little snack, this truck goes by. He takes off maybe about 30 minutes later. So I don't know what he was doing at all, but he headed off the other direction. And like I say, I never saw another car. But so I'm sitting there for a while and talking about being alone, you know, whether you hype up yourself a little bit or you have the sensation, the energy's just off a little bit. Sometimes you just, especially when you've been in this field for a long time, you realize that something doesn't feel right. So I do what uh, comes natural to me. I just, I say some prayers. Um, I do keep a Bible in my van. I just read a chapter. I'm just cooling out. And, uh, but I find that the energy is kind of persistent. And, and I wanted to focus on, you know, maybe even potentially having some type of, um, I don't know if there's an official name for it, kind of a, I call it a psychic communication with a Sasquatch uh, species of sort. Um, you know, having them kind of communicate with me while I'm alone, I'm completely open. And so I decide that I think there's some spirits out there and I, I called across them over and uh, and I kind of clear the air and I'm feeling pretty good. And I tell you what, it was about 1030. When I'm kind of going through this process, it's getting late and I receive this. What I call a Sasquatch communication and uh, and I've had them before, not many, very few, but it usually starts with a picture of the Sasquatch. I don't know why it does. It's just an image that pops in my head. And in this case, the image popped in and there was a like a bunch of them standing there, but one of them was like laying on the ground or something. And I'm like, well, what's the deal with that? And right after that, I get kind of the words impressed into my mind that said there's eight of us. And a second later, it said one of us is hurt. And I'm like, well, I don't know, A, why would they tell me that? I mean, why would they express that the fact that one of them is hurt? I mean, I, just the fact that they identify themselves, that's not unusual. But they went to extra length to show that one was not standing and say that one was hurt. So, you know, I got this rolling around in my head and uh with that thought, I automatically think, what if I could pray for this Sasquatch for some type of healing? And, you know, and I just, I'm just going with the flow because that's what you do in these situations. It's not like it's a scientific study or something. I'm just like, I'm going to start praying and I hope this Sasquatch maybe finds some type of healing. And, uh, and, 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 yeah, this kind of stretches out the limits a little bit of most people's thoughts on Sasquatch. And and I'm just telling you, like, I experienced it. It's my testimony, I guess, so I got that right. <laughs> but uh, so I get past that. And about 11 o'clock, you know, I'm doing this praying. And I noticed every time I said a prayer, there was all kinds of creaking occurred inside the inside of the van. Like as if it was getting really cold out, but it really wasn't. The temperature was barely changing. But every time during the prayer, I would say, it would just start creaking inside the van. And I noticed that. That was one of the first things I noticed. And then at about 
11 o'clock or so, my heart begin, begins to race. It's just racing. Like I was in extreme fright or anxiety or something. And, and I couldn't explain it because that is not a feeling that is normal to me or that I experience very often. But it just like it just like my heart would not stop beating fast. And as a matter of fact, at one point, I'm like, if this doesn't calm down, I'm driving back to town. And, and it's not like I felt fear per se, but I was concerned. I'm not a young family anymore for one, and I'm a little concerned about my heart in general. And I, the guy that was running the event in town there actually invited me to stay in a parking lot. He pointed out some parking lots I could stay in. I could have easily stayed in town, but that wasn't what it was all about to me. So it gets to a point where it's about 25 minutes out. My heart has not stopped racing. And and then I kind of had said a, a little prayer or two to try to calm, was it working? And finally, I just get to that point where it's now or never. And I just said, God, I need to calm down. I can't go on like this. I'm going to have to be out of here. I need to calm down. And within two minutes, I was calm. It just, boom, I was calm. It went away. Whatever it was, was now gone. And I don't know if there was some type of energy that was, who, was it right in the van there with me? I mean, I don't even know. I can't really describe what was causing that, but something was very close and causing that weird energy. Okay, but, and then the, oh, sorry. No, go I was ahead. just going to say, when, the, when did the lights show up? That's exactly, essentially what happened next. Um, well, I shouldn't say that. After I calmed down, I slept for a few hours. And it was about 2.30 in the morning. So just maybe two and a half hours later when I hear kind of a buzzing sound. And, uh, at, you know, first, you know, you assume it's a vehicle. I look to the front of the van and I see the curtains, the privacy curtains that we put up there. I see there's a light on them, like as if there was a car passing. So, you know, I'm just curious. So I lean up and I pull up the curtain by the window. That's right by my head. The windows are wide open. And I'm looking out down. I can just see, I can see that whole road as it goes down. And there's no car there. No lights, no car. I glance back. No sound. No, I mean, there's nothing. It's just gone. And uh, well, of course, the first thing that enters my mind is somebody just pulled over, saw my van and pulled over in front of my van. And uh, so, you know, I'm kind of freaking out just a little bit because I'm more wary of humans stopping and harassing me than I would be of anything else. And, and so I get up and I get out of the bed and I sneak, try not to even make the van shake, you know, and I sneak up and I peek out the curtains and I'm slowly scanning and there's just nothing there. And uh, so finally I walk back and I lay down again and I'm at a loss for words, but I'm a little bit pumped up because I'm like, okay, stuff is starting to crack here. Things are happening. And it was at about 310 because I was still pretty wide awake at the time at 310. And we got, I have to explain that we have these skylights there's three of them in the van they're kind of on the roof and i'm laying in bed and i can see straight out them things and it's about 310 exactly when i see a lighted orb just kind of float by all three of those from driver's side to passenger side i mean it's just like i don't know it's this big about as big as my hands are apart here and it's, it's not bright it's just but it's a lighted orb that just floats past all three of those windows. And I was excited for about one minute about that. I'm like, boy, things are going on. But that second light put me in a whole different sense of um, feeling. And um, all of a sudden I went into this intense calmness where I swear it was less than five minutes I just completely fell asleep. That last light that came through was so 
calming. I can't even explain it. So relaxing that I just like almost instantly fell asleep. So do you think it was like UFO or was it um, uh, a, oh, a drone or anything like that? Well, I mean, based on where I was and the fact that there had been no cars, um, the the trees are extremely high. It's tight spots. I really don't know how they could have maneuvered a drone in there that well. Um, it's possible. Anything's possible. Another guy said, well, maybe it was just the moon coming through. I said, well, you know, I don't know. I don't. It didn't seem or appear to me. You know, How I've seen a lot of, of moon sight, you know. Right. How big of an area were you in where the trees, were they, they tight to you and stuff or what? No, no. I particularly had parked in a tight spot, didn't like it because I didn't have any visual. And, you know, if something starts digging around out there, you want a little visual. So I went into a spot that was probably like 40 yards, almost by 80 or 90 yards. Oh, so, so it's quite big. It's a pretty so big clearing it. that somebody pushed in there and and there was even like i say a lot of spots where there was no like uh grasses and stuff so you know when i got up in the morning i did go look for tracks and uh but that's i mean that's what the essence of it i can zoom ahead is that i fell back asleep and i went right into this dream that i had driven during the night in the dark and I'd parked there and I woke up in the dream. You know, I went right into waking up in the dream, but I was still sleeping really. But I was waking up and I realized that I'd parked in this guy's cow pasture. And and I hear a cow and it's morning and I'm looking out the curtain again. And I'm like, how did I not know I was parked in this guy's pasture? And I get <laughs> into the driver's seat and I drive out of this thing. <laughs> And uh, and there's cows and there's a, this old wood barn up on the other side of the road. All the cows had to go from the pasture across the road I was driving on to get to the barn to get milk that morning. And uh, so I finally I wiggle through all these cows and I get out the other side and I wake up and it's morning. I mean, it's just, it just all fell together like that. And so then I get up, I go outside, I look for tracks and uh, there's one track but it had no toes it looked like a track but there were like no toes or anything and and nothing really else that i seen um i went out i was gonna walk out to the road and all of a sudden i hear something running through the woods directly at me and i'm like oh boy now i got some activity i get my phone out you know and i'm set it on uh photograph and uh at the last minute it veers off and heads for the road which is probably about 40 some yards down. And so it's cruising along through the woods and I'm running across the clearing and we get to the road at the exact same time. And it comes barreling out and it's this weird scrawny looking bear. Oh, it's it's not like heavy set like a bear normally is. Oh. Um, it's got these long legs, just a, like a juvenile. It just it even ran funny. It's Legs were kind of floppy as it ran across the road. Are you sure and it was a bear, Russ? I know, right? I well, mean, I you know, I mean, we tell, we hear about dogman stories up there, up in that yeah. area, you know? Yeah. Shapeshifters. Yeah, shapeshifters. But it, I mean, it was close enough and I've seen enough bear and I went and I actually, I have pictures of its tracks and stuff. All indicators was that it was a bear, but it was just an unusual clumsy looking juvenile just running through. And uh, and I thought about that exact situation a week before that we had a situation where we heard heard something running through the woods and we didn't know what it was. And we had an EVP that said it's running with the bear. Like oh. whatever it was coming towards us, same situation, it was coming right at us in that situation not more than a week before and well i can't say it was running initially we heard it coming and it got to about 30 yards before the edge of the clearing where we were standing and 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 one of the investigators was standing there and i was there a little bit farther back 
And I said, I, I heard a wood knock. And she said, I didn't hear it. She was moving around, you know. And then she says, there's the second one. And as soon as she said that, whatever had we heard walking through the woods rushed her from about 30 yards in the woods right up to the edge of the clearing where we were standing. And she turned around and run like crazy back to where I was standing. And uh, I mean, I imagine it was really hard pumping for her to have something running right at her. Right. And the EVPs we got, one of the EVPs we got said it was running or it was running with the bear or something yeah. very similar to that. Yeah. Oh, was this like, in Chippewa State Forest? Yes, that was in there, the Chippewa you know, National Chipp Forest. Listen, Chippewa Forest is full of crazy things. Yeah. Can I just say yeah there's a lot of paranormal activity. I love activity. Chippewa Forest. <laughs> I mean, that's where we are all the time, mostly, you know? Right. But do you so, think so? Do you think these orbs could have been Bigfoot? I know you said you found a track without toes, but you know, oftentimes it's pretty hard to find tracks. We've talked about this before, Russ. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's hard to find tracks. And you know, it seems like many times when we have had experiences with Squatch, uh, there is lights, there are orbs. I mean, and they say, you know, one of the things that is thought is that they can put you in kind of a trance kind of a sleep mode right which you would, did experience it seems yeah like. yeah i mean i definitely like i say i did experience uh, some unusual things um i've experienced these orbs both in buildings and outside of buildings in the forest mm -hmm. and can i really explain for certain i've never been able to validate those lighted orbs matter the, the interesting thing was now that i think about it i investigated the old bar that was in reamer it's long been closed but they had a lot of things happening dishes flying different things and uh so they called me to come up there and check the place out and while i was there we were sitting at the bar in there with the equipment running and i glanced over my shoulder and in the kitchen, shot all the way across the kitchen, was a lighted orb. Same exact thing, really, you know, about 15 to 20 inches around. And it was a lighted orb. And it just whoop. And it shot right through the kitchen, both of us out, plain as day. Wow. So I just thought of that now, that that happened in Reamer too that time. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, what are the lighted orbs? Can we really identify? I haven't been able to validate what they are. Mm -mm. But I will say for absolute certain that I feel Sasquatch gets a lot of the the blame for a lot of the creatures that are in the woods. Yep. There's a absolutely. lot more than just Sasquatch running around that woods. You got and that. And I'm right. absolutely certain of that. Yep. There are. But you know, Heidi, remember when we talked about these orbs and and there are didn't we hear that they feel like they turn into and they can make themselves into energy because i we both think they're interdimensional i think you know and that they can can turn themselves into orbs and move move along to other dimensions right heidi am i saying yeah. that right yeah i think we've both got that as an idea that that could be how they mm -hmm. move around um and how they they travel interdimensionally or through this dimension anyway, you mm -hmm. know, however they want to, to manifest. Um, I also think though, it's interesting listening to your story because I, I am of the belief that if you're going to see a UFO or a, a Bigfoot, you're probably, it might be connected to UFO activity, which you Russ had mentioned, you know, some UFO, uh, you know, in the past, but it, you know, I think of, it's interesting where you're talking about having some of these, energies and visions and things coming through and it gets really intense like you said like wow it's mm -hmm. getting really active here we go and mm -hmm. then quite quickly everything stops and you're asleep right so then i i start to lean more towards ufo activity in the sense of you know not saying you were abducted but you know setting up the potential for you know, to put you in a place where you can't wake up, you know, you are being put to sleep. Why, you know, is it, you know, just to 
so they aren't interrupted or so that there could be possible like, hey, we'll we'll do what we want with you if we decide to, you know, or whatever. So and again, I'm not saying that that happened, but that's kind of what I was thinking when you, you were talking is, you know, I wonder if this was something that could involve UFO activity and moving you to a place where they they have control. Mm hmm. Yeah, and it it is unusual to me in hindsight how I had two situations where potentially an energy of some sort, whatever it was, used the bear to travel through the woods. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. And, you know, and there's some other EVPs that, I mean, I'm not going to go too far into some of those EVPs I got. But it did not indicate that it was Bigfoot. As a matter of fact, one of the EVP says something like, the big ones aren't moving, which I, I just automatically assumed that they were talking about Sasquatch. Something else was moving. And, and we've had, like I say, we've had quite a few little instances where mm -hmm. things have copied the actions of Bigfoot and and it turns out potentially I don't really think it was I think there's things that actually copy Bigfoot you know everything from the calls to the knocks the rock knocks it gets to a point where we unless you actually physically see it right. you maybe don't even know for sure exactly what you are communicating with yep and that's true Mm hmm. Could be. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. It's a whole uh, it's just an interesting mix of so many different things happening, you know, mm -hmm. starting out with these visions and moving into, you know, f feeling this, you know, this physical anxiety and the heart rate and, you know, just, you know, falling asleep, getting, you know, such an interesting um just a sequence of events, I guess. Yeah. And it is, and and you know, I admit it to Jerry firsthand that you know I put myself into a vulnerable position right. for the sake of that research I was doing, so to speak. Um, was it a smart idea? Would any of that have happened if there would have been somebody in the van with me? Would we have been too distracted and out of focus? Like I say, I put the focus, I created the focus by kind of cleansing the energy, uh, calling on any spirits to back off, either move over, move into the light, or, or just allow me to have this open slate. And uh, so I, I made myself kind of vulnerable. And is it smart? I don't recommend it to everybody. Yeah. Unless, like I say, right. unless you have those groundings, protections, and all that other stuff put in place. So I wouldn't recommend it to somebody that's just. Just starting out. Just starting no. out. Absolutely yeah. not. I think that's, that's the worst thing. Because yeah. could... they wouldn't understand what was all happening. I barely really knew. Yeah. But I knew how to manage it. Mm -hmm. I right. didn't understand it. But I knew how to manage what was going on. So one more question. I'm sorry. Uh, we're running out of time. <laughs> It's going pretty quick. Um, so now you had found what you thought was a track. Um, yes, absolutely. Yeah. And and maybe, you know, during at some point when you put this all together, you can show a picture of it. But it is right. almost stone. I would literally say you could see where the dirt and maybe even shells and different things had been compacted together into a footprint on the edge of a river in the water actually just a little bit in the water it had been like compacted down and sat there for so long it turned into literally almost stone yeah there's a place in minnesota here i cannot remember where it is but somebody had found something in a river um it was off to the side a little bit water would trickle on it once in a while and it turned out to be an 8,000 year old skull 
Wow. Now, a lot of people said that it could be something where the water and all the silt and everything else um, kind of protected it over time. Um, now, thinking about your footprint, I mean, could it have been, you know, actually, um, you know how your normal footprint when you step down your like your toes and everything are imprinted, right? Mm -hmm. But in time, um, if water and silt and everything's running over it, it could actually fill that and take that shape on the opposite side. Right. Do you think that there's that possibility that what you had seen or that you've got pictures of it, right? Right. And like I would I say, love to see the photos. And I know people listening to the show would love to see the photos. So if you could definitely send it, I'll get it put in here somewhere. Yeah. Steph, you seen it, didn't you? I or did. No? Yeah. I thought you I thought you I mean you can there. see yeah. like the heel and then you can mm -hmm. see where it comes skinnier a little bit, like a foot does, and then goes back out into the foot. I mean, it's it clearly looks like a foot. How? Mm -hmm. What size do you think this is? It was in that close to 13, 14 inch range. Wow. Pretty big. I mean, so it's like, pretty good sized. Yeah. Yeah. Heidi, wow. now where you live and stuff like that, you guys have rivers around there and stuff, right? Don't you have yep. a small creek or something? Have yeah, you we found... have, we're right by the river here. Gotcha. Have you found anything different in the river that, you know, because it, it just seems like these days, I know this is, I'm, I'm kind of punching at stuff, I guess, but it seems like now, now in 2023 is what I'm saying, people are finding very odd shapes or very odd things near water and it's like what exactly could this mean oh you know yeah i don't know i mean it's just living here the last three years it's definitely different you know living near uh, a body of water that's got some trees in the area i would say this area is incredibly active when it comes to Bigfoot and I need to get out there more than I do because it's in my yard and um, but the river you're asking about the river and like making impressions and stuff and this river here I don't find that as often because it's uh, it's very rocky down right along the edge of the river uh, it doesn't have a lot of that soft until you really get into the water so uh, I think that might be a struggle to find something like what you're talking about at the edge of this river here but it's um, definitely interesting now that I'm hearing this and I'm going to take a look a little closer. Yeah, I'd love to hear what you have to say about that. I, you know, after, you know, kind of keeping it open and stuff, because people are really finding things that are unbelievable in water. Like, um, oh, what is his name? It's, it's not Eric. It's a different person that they found um, big rocks. And when they pulled the rocks out, and uh, they're rock hounds. They figured if they bust them in half, usually there's some type of jewel on the inside. There was an actual stone face on the inside. Now that is just weird. I mean, that could definitely happen and stuff. And uh, mm -hmm. I will uh, get you guys photos of that. It's just weird stuff that the water seems to claim it all. I mean, if you have uh, an old well on your property, usually that's how, you know, the you know, the spirits or ghosts, whatever you want to call them, can make their way in is through water. It's a conduit. Mm -hmm. So being water like that, maybe it's, you know, evidence that they are around, mm -hmm. you know, weird. What well, is an area where people are not as investigative towards? I mean, how many people walk into a creek and walk up and down the creek for an hour and just feeling on the ground underneath your feet for everything that's underneath it and just kind of doing that. Well, we did it because there was an old town there yeah. and I was actually running a magnet at the time. And, uh, but anything that felt weird on her foot, you know, we reached down there. I was getting pretty wet, you know, but now oh, what's this? And I just could not believe my eyes when I picked up that, mm -hmm. you know, that footprint looking thing. But the bottom oh, line, you've 
got the footprint is solid. It is. Oh yeah. Oh, oh it's okay. Like cement. It's like cement almost. Oh. Yeah, like it like it had settled for so long and compressed and it's almost essentially a stone. Yeah. It's very I gotta hard. see this. Yeah. I wanna s- have you yeah. seen this, Heidi? No, no, I definitely no, wanna see it though. Yeah. 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 Russell and, and, and like on one of the shows I just watched uh about investigating or, or out and seeking Bigfoot in Minnesota. Um, one of the things that they identified uh, that the tracks and in this show I watched last night, you know, they kind of walk in areas where it is moist and wet, where their footprints a lot of times are going to dissipate and disappear. Yep. And yep. if it rains at all, the rainwater washes them out and they follow paths like this. Mm-hmm. And in several of the places we've been called to, they're in these areas where there's these very long swampy areas where they can use that as a corridor to travel and hide their tracks and whatnot in those long swampy corridors. And uh, yes, I mean, obviously they do walk in the woods and do this and that too, but uh, they use water a lot. And I think one of the reasons is it hides their footprints. Yep. That's I very interesting. Bigfoot lives in the swamp. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Well, very I still, cool. I still have a lot of questions about Bigfoot. Yes, you know. I mean, I've seen him. I know he's real. Yeah. But I just have a lot of questions about some people when they're out looking for him or her. Or her um, you know, with these different theories of, of um, why is this branch down? It's not broken. It looks like it was held there. That kind of stuff. I mean, I, I still got a lot of questions about that. I think other people do too. But a lot of times, like Russ, you know, I have full respect for you, for you, Stephanie, and for you, Heidi. But, you know, I still have questions. Well, don't we all? And we the all thing do. is, True. that's what it's all about. It's we Usually when we go out, and I think all of you can agree with this, we find more questions than answers, for sure. Mm-hmm. So exactly. Like, well, what is this? And what is that? And how? What? You know? Yeah. Um, but, well, but they down- use woods. They use the the logs and stuff a lot for different yeah. types of markings. I, yeah, I think so, too. I, I believe that. Be. I believe be. it. Okay. Could be. Well, we're down to a minute left. Um, anything that anybody wants to say something real quick? Just, you know, thanks, Russ, for being on. This was super fun. And, you know, we'll have to maybe get back all together later when it's not so buggy outside. The girls will be out again. But I am mm-hmm. not going to be eating up. <laughs> Heidi knows. <laughs> well, we, we should really do a group reamer trip sometime. We should. We should. And uh, hopefully I'll have my new system. I'm going to have a, a 360 camera plus one that shines up at the sky. And uh, I'm going to have it so I can raise it up above my van. And so whenever I go out in the van, I can have this 360 plus a sky mount and be watching all the way around me. Is a skeptic allowed? Absolutely. In a pub tent. (laughs) (laughs) All right, guys. Well, thank you all for getting together. I appreciate it. And uh, I will get you all a copy of this. Okay. All right. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Good night.